dreads all in my face, now I'm Jamaican. I'm rolling, but they say I'm acting dope, they call me Satan. You are my soul, my soul, my soul, my soul. Devil on my soul, my soul, my soul. Who said I sold my soul for gold and clothes and hoes? I got demons on my back. Only thing made me safe is a pill to take a nap. Hope if he do, don't be surprised. Yeah, look the devil in his eyes. Two or three chokers, I'm choking myself. He wagging new electronic. Deep in religion, might get back the money. I done been stuck in the trenches, I dance with the devil. And I sell drugs to my uncle. Damn, that's evil twin. That mean we evil then. Evil twin, evil twin. I was with Dirk in LA at his crib in Hollywood. And we were just sitting down talking and shit. I was standing out there for like a couple of days, like been a week. Like music form, it, had, it was slowing down. Foes wasn't getting discouraged though. He wasn't getting discouraged. It's just like, you remember that peak he had? It was like, all right, he was going, then it went back down. Yeah. He started dying down, shows, everything. Then he all right, peace, y'all. Peace, peace, peace. So in this video, um, I'm going to be talking about the rapper Little Dirk. All right, Little Dirk, uh, who is also known as Chicago's The Voice, right? Um, we're going to be speaking about his career and how he got in the music business. A lot of people don't know how he got in the music business, but we're going to break it down and uh, basically discuss it for y'all. All right. So uh, Little Dirk was born on October 19th, 1992 in the Inglewood section of Chicago. All right. Now, um, he grew up having a pretty normal childhood and began doing music at an early age on MySpace. Let you know how far back he goes. You know, MySpace uh, was actually popping around 2005 up until 2010. All right. Once Instagram came into play, MySpace went out the door. All right. Now, during his time at Paul Robeson High School, he met and befriended uh, rapper Famous Dex. All right. Now, during this time, they, you know, they would freestyle at the lunch table and stuff like that. So he kind of got his feet wet with learning how to rap, you know, um, in high school. All right. Now, in 2008, at the age of 16, he started to take rap a little serious. But the following year, 2009, he released his first song, R.I.P. Mo. Uh, Lamron, 300. If you ain't with Lamron, you ain't getting money. Now, that song actually gained them a little bit of notoriety on YouTube and MySpace, right? Where people was like, yo, you know, that's dirt right there. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, he started to gain followers and, and, and subscribers, so he stuck with it, right? Now, um, in 2011, Dirk would be arrested for weapon charges and sentenced to three months in jail. You know, after his release from jail, he started to take rap more seriously, all right? Now, his father, Big Dirk, uh, who was locked up in jail, um, convinced him to stay out of the streets and focus on his music career. Now, many people may say, oh, well, maybe his father, you know, got him hooked up with somebody in there just because his father, you know, he did a good deed by not telling on Larry Hoover, right? Um, but, you know, that that's, you know, that's needless to say. We don't know, you know, but um, that could be a possibility as well. Now, um, in 2012, right, he added fuel to the war in Chirac with the song L's Anthem. I um where he this opposite side brick squad. Niggas don't trust them. Brick squad, I say fuck them. the world with them, so fuck them. Now from this, uh, he gained the huge buzz in his city. All right, with the sing song flow. Now Chicago is actually the home of the spitters. You know what I'm saying? You had rappers like the Brat, um, Twister, Bump J, Lep, Bogus Boys, Pac Man, King Louie, Common, Kanye. You know, so many rappers uh, that came from Chicago that were spitters, right? A lot of people were talented that came out of uh, Chicago. Chief Keith, you know, um, but he separated himself from being a uh, spitter and basically focused on the sing-song flow, which actually helped him uh, get a record deal, all right? Now, in April of 2012, Lil Durk was signed to Def Jam. All right, by way of John Monopoly, who is also from Chicago, and Jay Boogie. All right, two pillars in hip hop responsible for the signing of Kanye West. How we got the Def Jam was my homeboy Jay Boogie, also Def Jam and uh, 
the whole 300 Moon, the whole Chicago scene when they came to Chicago, when they was sending the A&Rs out, I'm saying he was already close to us. And he just started cuffing me and me and Lil Reese. That's how me and Lil Reese got on Def Jam together. I'm saying we was thirsty, like, man, I want a deal. Just because, like I said, we said we was going to be rich as soon as we signed. They just started, like, like I said, you got to bend your old boys and, and prove to them, like, this is what I can do. And when they see me building my own relationship with these artists, get my own features, I'm saying they brought them in more, like, all right, let's see what he can do. So when I started dropping the mixtapes and they started seeing the numbers, they started really getting on me now. But that's what everybody. Now, ironically, after signing to a major label and uh, released one of the biggest songs to date, This Ain't What You Want, all right, Lil Durk's close friend, L.A. Capone, was shot and killed after leaving the recording studio. Now, when I tell y'all about this, right, when people get these record deals and start taking off and stuff like that, you know, it's always somebody close to them that dies, all right? You have Meek Mill and Lil Snoop, you know, it, it's always somebody close to them that dies. Now, many other people have uh, passed away that have been associated with Durk. All right, it's too many to name. I'm not even going to lie to you. All right, it's way too many to name. But one person in particular, all right, is going to be King Vaughn. All right, now many King Vaughn fans believe that Lil Durk, all right, may have sacrificed him, right, uh, for fame or whatever, right? But if you know, right, if you know better, you know that King Vaughn died over a female. All right, now... I'm not going to go into the whole story of what took place and name names or whatever the case may be, but um, basically King Vaughn passed away, you know, just because he was taunting another rapper, right? He was taunting another rapper and the rapper got mad, you know, and somebody else who wasn't even the actual rapper went out there and put their life on the line for that guy, right? That's basically what happened. Uh, and in return, somebody ended up losing their life, you know. So sad situation, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, most people would say, yo, King Vaughn kind of deserved that because, you know, previously before he got in the music business, you know, he was killing people. Yeah. So he was in, he was in jail for two murders? Yeah, one murder and two attempts. I just beat. How you beat that? All right, now, I found something very interesting, right? Uh, Quando Rondo, right, had actually made shirts mocking King Vaughn's death, okay? Um, and the shirts were actually called the Jump Out Gang, all right? Now, uh, Quando Rondo has since disassociated himself with the Jump Out Gang, but when you're taunting somebody, right, and making these shirts, you're putting your brother's mugshot on there and you know, calling it the jump out game. But Dirk actually responded to the insult on his song with Pooh Shiesty, Should Have Ducked. Throw that mask on when you jump out first, you better blast, yeah? All right, now on September 28th, 2001, just a year and two months later, right, Lil Dirk got some interesting tattoos that explain a lot, all right? Now, as you can see here, he has the all C and I and what appears to be a red eye demon tattooed on him. Okay, now I'm gonna ask y'all the question: Who in their right mind would get an all C and I tattooed on them? Okay, unless they are part of that type of group, right? That 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 just wouldn't make no sense. So when you see this, it just lets you know he may have taken the oath. Okay, now on July 30th, 2022, just nine days after Lil Durk reunited with Kanye West and brought him on stage at Rolling Loud, okay, Dirk suffered a major injury at Lollapalooza when he was struck in the face, particularly the left eye by Pyrotech. Now, mysteriously, Dirk's album at the time, because I pay attention to a lot of this stuff, but mysteriously, at the time, um, Dirk's album 7220 landed at number one on Billboard's 200 charts. Now, um, I'm going to be honest. I believe that this was actually a ritual, okay, that had to take place, all right? An offering had to be given up. Sometimes these people may ask you for 
a human sacrifice or a friend or relative, whatever, right? Sometimes it may be your eye, you know what I'm saying? And in reality, sometimes your eye may be, you know, have to be sacrificed in order to get in or to get out, right? Uh, we see a lot of entertainers, all right, um, with the loss of an eye. You have ESTG, you got Fetty Wap, you got uh, the rapper Houston, you got Dobie, all of these guys, um, you know, had to do something that partakes with the eye. I explained this before in one of my videos, but, um, you know, sometimes this stuff has to happen in order for a person to either leave or enter the occult, all right? Dirk took to his Instagram and posted a photo of him covering his eye, all right, with the bandage stating that he would be taking a break. But um, one in particular is his latest album, right, which is called Almost Healed. Now, when you see this artwork here, right, he's basically paying homage to the weeping statue, right, which is the statue of Mary. All right, and her eyes began to bleed. All right, so this is what I said. A lot of these rappers that practice, they're all involved in Catholicism because these are the people who are writing their checks, right? Same thing with Young Thug with this album, right? We see this nonsense here going on. They're giving thanks to those Jesuits and those people over there because these are the people that write their checks, all right? A lot of people don't want to believe this, but these people write their checks. So when you see this album cover almost healed here, all right, with his eye bleeding, all right, it, this is all giving thanks to the weeping statue, all right, the mother goddess, all right, um, this is how they, this is what they practice, I'm gonna be honest with you, so when people may say, yo, Jay, you know, Dirk is Muslim now, you know, he practices Islam, but you gotta understand, a lot of these rappers, they serve two masters, all right, they, they do their dirty work, and then they, they feel bad about it, and go and practice, you know, occult practices, or, or you know what I'm saying? Um, so, do I think Dirk is a part of the occult? Absolutely, you know what I'm saying? He, his music is demonic, all right? Um, he pushes that demonic energy to young children, and, uh, you know, he, he tries to credit it by saying, oh, you know, we doing a toy drive, a turkey drive. You know, it's, it's, it's sick, man. It's sick, man, what these rappers actually do. You know, just for some piece of paper, man. You know, but um, with that being said, I hope y'all enjoyed this video, man. And uh, hope I broke it down for y'all. I'm going to start doing more new rappers for y'all too, man. All right, peace.